Welcome to the Van of Action on a rainy afternoon in the mountains of British Columbia. That background noise you hear is the rain bouncing off my shop. I'm sorry, I can't do anything about that. Today we're going to talk about re-energizing the 12 volt electrical system after it's been shut down for the winter. Here in the mountains, I wouldn't consider driving a vehicle like this in the winter time very far. And we couldn't go south because of COVID. So in the fall, I just winterized the van and put it in the shop for the winter. And that was the end of it. Now it's time to liven things back up again. And I've not done this before. So I'm going to share with you the method I'm going to use for doing it. Along the way, if you find this useful, please give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I don't mind saving money. And I'm, I'm very aware of the money that I'm spending on this build. And there's times when I've really been, I've been bragging about how much I save, like the $13.44 roof clips I made for my roof rack instead of 700 bucks. That video will be linked to at the end of this video. In any event, there are times when I believe it's important to spend money too. And I really don't know dick about 12 volt wiring or 12 volt electrical system. So that was a place I didn't want to try and scrimp. And it seemed to me that it made a lot more sense to buy all the components so they would come out of the box ready to talk to each other. You could go to Amazon and you could put together, cobble together all the pieces that you need and, and get them all cheaper and hope that they would all find a way to communicate with each other and the system would work the way it was supposed to work. But I would never be comfortable doing that. I just wouldn't be. So what I did was I went to Renogy and I want everyone to understand at this moment that there are absolutely no affiliate links on this on the, this video. There's no sponsorship of this video. I'm simply trying to share my opinion. I'm not making a nickel in doing this. This is what I thought would be best for me. This worked out really well. I want to share it in case someone else finds it might be useful too. But I went to Renogy because they have such a great reputation. I bought Renogy solar powers or solar panels. I bought a Renogy. 50 amp DC to DC MTTPTPT controller, so we'll do both solar and the battery, the, the DC to DC charging. And I bought two 100 amp hour lithium smart batteries from Renogy. They were all made to talk to each other, just made life a lot easier. These smart batteries are, they come with their own uh, uh, battery management system, their own little computer in there, I think. And they also come with something called shelf mode. So when I wanted to shut it down for the winter time, all I had to do was make sure, well, I could do it at any time, but I made sure that both batteries were charged 100%, and then I could program the battery to go into shelf mode so it wouldn't be discharging all winter long. To me, that makes, it just makes so much sense. So today, we're gonna set these in. I'm gonna explain to you how we're gonna do it. Let's get started. Here are the two batteries that will be going up into the battery compartment. But before I do that, I want to check my charge controller. Charge controllers are one of the most critical parts of the system and they have to be handled properly. And you cannot have any energy going into a charge controller until that energy has a place to go when the charge controller is finished with it. It can't dead end at the charge controller or you, or you will burn your charge controller out. So, to be very careful last fall because I'm a little bit anal, even though I have a disconnect here and I have a breaker here, I have just to make sure I also disconnected these wires from the terminals. This is the wire. This will be the hot wire coming off the roof solar panels. And it's important to note that solar panels don't have an on off switch on their own. If they're on the roof and they're exposed to any kind of light at all, they will generate some electricity. So you've got to be sure before you connect this to the charge controller that the battery is connected at the other end. And this is the power coming from the DC to DC charger off the battery at the front. Truthfully, with the van in the shop, I probably didn't need to do that, but just because I'm a little bit anal and paranoid, I did it anyway. So right, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that that's okay. So that'll be, I'll, I can connect the batteries and I won't hurt the charge controller. So now let's take a look at the batteries. You won't be able to see this very well when it's up there. So starting here, I'll be connecting the positive terminal to the positive terminal. And then to this terminal, I'll be connecting the heavy red wire that runs to the bottom of the fuse panel. And if you watch the uh, 12 wiring, connecting the 12 volt uh, video, which I'll link at the end, you'll see what that's all about. There's a black heavy wire coming out of the back of the fuse panel. It'll go up to the back end of the battery compartment and that end will connect to the back end of the, the negative terminal, which in turn will connect to the negative terminal on the front battery. That will complete the whole circle. Now it's really important before we go any further to stress that these batteries need to be installed securely. 
God forbid you should be in an accident and have these things turn into projectiles if you hit something. This is the packing material the batteries were actually shipped in, which came in handy. I've got a sandwich on all four sides, wedged into that box, and then I have a ratchet strap, which is anchored to the metal of the wheel well at one end, and it comes down and attaches to a tie down at this end. Really secure. These aren't going anywhere. Okay, now I want to just show you this. You'll see I have this red connected to this terminal. It's not connected to the other battery. But the other batch, the other line comes in and it's connected to this battery. So right now this battery is connected to the system. This battery is not connected to the system. So I have one battery connected. And at the moment, nothing's happening. And that's good. So now I'm going to take, if I can find it, I'm going to take, this is a smart battery. So in here, there are two ports. One's for communication and one is the on off switch. I guess our shelf, different changing, different modes. So I plug that in. Check that out. Now watch this. If I press that, press that, and now it's on. Can you see that? Hopefully you can see it. Yes, it's lit up. And there's power going to the charge controller, or the charge controller's has reading power. So that battery is on. Good. Before I connect it, I'm going to turn this battery on as well. Let's see if you can see this. Now it's on. So now both batteries are turned on, but they're not connected to each other. That's kind of cool. Now the batteries are connected. And the last connection I made here is this cable. And this is the battery monitor. One of the most important parts of this, in my opinion, is understanding or knowing how much energy you actually have in the battery. So this is a, a Renergy battery monitor and it's couldn't be easier to install. It just gets spliced into the black cable, the negative cable, as the very last thing before it goes into the battery. And then you connect this red wire to the red terminal of the battery array. And, and so through some voodoo, it, it measures exactly how much is in the battery. This cable runs to the monitor in the front. We'll take a look at that in just a few minutes. I've come up into the cabin and the batteries, the two batteries are connected. There's nothing charging. Right now it says we're, we've got 199 amp hours. Now this is a monitor you can program how many, what the capacity is. I did that when I, when I set up the system the first time. It really makes me happy to see that I don't have to do it again. I didn't know that. 100% charged. These batteries have been sitting on the shelf for about five months. Really happy about that. Now let's go take a look at the solar panels. As often happens here in the mountains, the rain stopped. In fact, the sun even came out a little bit at first. I came up on the roof and I wiped off the solar panels and I pulled the van outdoors before I made the solar connection. Because even on a day like today, they will generate some electricity. It's absolutely critical to keep these things clean. Gotta love this. This is the, uh, see that? That's the basement lights on. Basement lights. Gotta like it. Now, the blue light tells me that it's a lithium battery, is what it's programmed for, which is correct. And the yellow light tells me that the voltage is normal. So now I'm going to connect the power wire from the solar panels to, the, so to this terminal. I guess I wasn't holding my tongue just right. Now, keep an eye on this button here. This is the light that indicates the solar panels are working. I'm gonna turn this on. It'll take a couple of seconds sometimes, especially on a cloudy day. Oh, oh, look at that. The red light means it's charging. 
The last thing we're going to do is connect the DC to DC charging cable together. As long as the engine's not running, nothing's going to come out of it. But when the solar panels charge the batteries in back here completely full, if the surplus energy will start to trickle charge the battery at the front so it can never go dead. I like that idea too. Now, the solar panels have a disconnect, so I have a way to isolate them and turn them on and off. The DC to DC charger, if the engine's not going, it's not going, it's not going to run anyway. But I don't want it running all the time, so I have this, this breaker, the switchable breaker, that'll act as a, that'll act a disconnect for it. So I'm going to connect this one. The breaker's still open, so there's nothing going to be happening with it just yet. Now I'm going to close the breaker. If this system was completely charged, then this light would start to, no, this light would start to blink. This light won't turn on unless the engine's running and the alternator kicks in and I have to go in about 20 kilometers an hour for that to happen, so I won't be testing that standing here. That's the house. I wanted to walk back down to the van. It's not quite as dark as the camera makes it look. But I wanted to come down because in the woods, you know, you can't see it, but in the woods right in front of us, about a, oh, a couple hundred yards away, a cougar lives over there. And I'm not talking about the Bon Jovi kind of cougar. I'm talking about the four-legged kind. So I wanted to get down here before it got really dark. But I want to come down because this is one of the biggest thrills I have with my van build, is being able to come in at night and do this. Boom. Now, what's better than that? Isn't that a hoot? Turn that light off and turn on the, the overhead lights for the kitchen. Boom. Lighten up the kitchen. Over top of the bed, on each side of the bed, there's one of these. If you just touch it, it turns into a soft reading light. If you touch it again, it turns turns into a reading light. If the blue is a night light. Night light, reading light, off. And each of these lights have, uh, have uh, USB ports as well. Now what's better than that? Well, here's something that's better than that. Check this out. Outside, I haven't used this yet. It's an exterior light. Now it's at the back end of the van to draw the bugs that way and need to light up in front of the door as well. It's pretty cool. And the last part of it is the basement lights. You check into a campsite late at night, you got to find something in the back, really dark, until boom! I hope you found this useful. Give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. And watch these other videos on the side. They're all about the 12 volt wiring. And I think I promised you a roof clip link as well. Be well, everyone. We'll listen to this. Y'all come back.